Ever since I first tried the Quen family of models from Alibaba, I have been mighty impressed with them. Today they've officially launched the new Quen 3 series and it's pretty impressive stuff. We've got a total of 8 different models, 2 MOE mixture of expert models and 6 dense models. The 2 MOE models are the flagship Quen 3 with 235 billion parameters but only 22 billion active parameters and a lightweight Quen 3 with 30 billion parameters with just 3 billion active parameters. Plus, they've released 6 dense models ranging from tiny 0.6 billion all the way up to 32 billion parameters. All of these are released under the Apache 2.0 license, which is amazing for the open source community. Performance wise, these models are absolutely insane. The flagship Quen 3, the 235 billion parameter MOE model, rivals top tier models like DeepSeek R1. It's going head to head with Grok 3, Gemini 2.5 Pro, OpenAI's O3 Mini and O1, and it outcompetes them in almost every benchmark from coding to mathematics and general reasoning. That's pretty incredible when you think about it. If you look at the benchmark results specifically, the 235B model performs incredibly well across the board. In coding tests, it's outperforming even DeepSeek R1 and OpenAI's O1. On mathematics benchmarks, it's right up there with Gemini 2.5 Pro. And in general reasoning tasks, it's showing comparable or better results than models that supposedly have many more active parameters. What's really surprising is that the lightweight 30 billion Quen 3 model is performing amazingly well compared to much larger models like GPT-4, Omni, Gemma 3, and even their previous model generation. It does quite well across almost every benchmark, and this is probably the version you'd want to run locally because of how lightweight it is. One of the most interesting things about Quen 3 is that it uses the mixture of experts architecture with only 10% active parameters, which drastically cuts inference and training costs. They've also introduced this new hybrid thinking mode, which is super cool. It allows users to switch between step-by-step -step reasoning and instant answers based on the task complexity and your budget. In thinking mode, the model takes time to respond with chain of thought step-by-step -step thinking before delivering the final answer. This is great for complex reasoning tasks. In non-thinking mode, it provides quick, near instant responses, which is perfect for simpler questions where speed matters more than depth. And you can enable or disable this with a single hyperparameter. The model supports 119 languages and dialects, making it highly adaptable for global applications. Another thing that really excites me is the multimodal and agentic capabilities. They've added native support for MCPs, which means the model can use tools sequentially within its chain of thought. I saw a demo where it was processing a user request to extract Markdown from a GitHub page and then draw a bar chart to display the number of stars. During the thought process, it was able to call different functions or tools, use them, and then continue thinking based on the results. This is something we've only seen with models like O3 before. So having this in an open source model is pretty incredible. It's been pre-trained on a massive 36 trillion tokens, which is twice that of Quen 2.5. They've enhanced it with reinforcement learning and it brings stronger coding and agentic capabilities. When it comes to context windows, for the dense models, the smaller ones have a context window of 32,000 tokens, while the bigger dense models and both MOEs have context windows up to 128,000 tokens. Now, they haven't reported any long context benchmarks, so we're not sure how good the retrieval on these long contexts is, but keep in mind these aren't natively long context models. They were pre-trained at 32,000 tokens and then extended to 128,000 through post-training. If you want to start using these models, you have a few options. You can use model scope or you can chat with it directly through Quen's chatbot interface at chat.quen.ai. This is probably the easiest way to get started. You can also locally install the dense models if you prefer. Okay, so I'm in chat.quen.ai and in here, I'm going to select Quen 3 235B model and then I'm going to give this prompt here. Can you build me a copter game just like the original copter game? Use HTML, CSS and JavaScript in a single file. Use a real copter graphics like smoke trails. I will select the artifacts feature and then run it. I have never been a fan of the artifacts in Quen, so let's see if it has improved this time. 
I don't expect it to, but having said that, you know, I can always take this code and put it into codeviewit.com and preview it there. So that is not a problem. Okay. So it's coding. Let's preview it. Oh, look at the copter. It's just a rectangle. Um, okay. I think it works. I'm just going to copy this and then I will go here to codeviewit.com and I'm going to paste it here and then go to preview. Okay. So hard to play. There is no graphics for copter, but the game works. Go to new chat. I am going to paste this prompt here. Now, this is a prompt that I have given to Quen 2.5 max version and kind of did well. Let's see if there is any improvement at all. Every model struggled with the drag and drop part. Let's see if it works here. This is the prompt use HTML, create a modern and simple task management app. It should have two main parts, a table for tasks and a list for priorities. For the task table, users should be able to add or delete rows and each cell in the table should be editable so they can update task details like name, due date or priority. Also, when you click on the column headers, the table should sort the data like by task name or due date. Keep it clean and flat, no card designs and every model has struggled with this, always giving a card design and we are also giving a color to use. On the side, there should be a priority list where users can drag and drop items to reorder them. The item should have a visual cue on the right side, which indicates the user to click there to drag and rearrange the item. They should also be able to add new items, remove ones they don't need and edit the text directly in the list. When dragging items show evident visual feedback, so it's clear where the item will go with nice scaling animation. Like I said, this never worked properly, sort of did, but not perfectly. The design should look modern and slick with a flat style, nothing too fancy, no cards designs, just clean and professional. Let's run it. It looks really nice, actually. I actually really like this layout. So if I want to look at this in full screen, I'm just going to copy this and put it in here. And then I'll paste the code here, go here, and then go to full screen. This looks beautiful, except this one. So I can do this. I can add hello two, three, okay. And then I can push that there and this down. Beautiful. This has never been done so well in the single prompt. So great job. Great. These models also showcase massive efficiency gains, positioning Quen3 to be a major breakthrough for fast scalable AI deployment. I think the techniques they've used to develop this model will be widely adopted, which is great news for the whole AI community. I believe these models set the bar pretty high for upcoming releases from competitors. With DeepSeek R2 expected soon and LlamaCon happening soon as well, it's going to be an exciting time for open source AI models. Overall, Quen3 is definitely a game changer, especially on fast inference hardware. It's a huge step forward for the open AI model space. And I'd recommend trying out the smaller models locally as they're great open source alternatives to many of the proprietary models we've seen. That's it for this video. Hope you found this informative and got some value out of it. Let me know in the comments if you've tried these models already and what your experience has been like. If you would like to watch more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel, like this video, share it with your friends, and I will see you in the next one.